Hello, everyone. Welcome to the workshop conducting field work in another culture. I'm Hongling Chen, the host of this workshop, and this workshop is one of a series of five workshops delivered as part of the development of good practices training for responsible global academic partnerships. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our distinguished speaker, Dr. Mei Bing. Dr. Mei Bing is a social anthropologist currently working at School of Social Development and Public Policy at Fudan University in China. She has gained her PhD from University of Otago at New Zealand with the thesis of traveling Mingzhu. In her doctoral study, she focused on one of the Chinese ethnic minority groups and their migration stories between China and Australia. And she will introduce her current research interests, uh, medical anthropology, as well as Chinese ethnic minorities and globalization. I'm currently is a social work professor with a specialist in gerontological studies, and I would be very happy to have this chance to work with Dr. Mading uh, and all of you to make this session fruit fruitful. So now I would like to transfer uh, the floor to Dr. May. Uh, thank you, Professor Chen, for your introduction. So, um, hi everyone. Um, it's my honor to be here to uh, introduce and discuss some of my research experience with you. And also, it's a very good opportunity for us to share and uh, and discuss what field work is and how to do it. So, um, perhaps as you already know, field work is the uh, very fundamental tool for uh, a social anthropologist. And um, so, we are going to. Uh, talk about field work from this discipline and with a little bit of its history. So I guess we already provide you two of the recommend uh, piece of reading. I hope you already read them, and so it, it will help us to elaborate the point better. So uh, first of all, what is field work, and what is field? Um, and in the early time of anthropology, most of the work in, was done on armchair based on. Uh, travel log and diaries, and uh, uh, researchers didn't go to the real field. So um, they collect data based on second-hand stories. But uh, starting from Malinowski and those uh, anthropologists at the same time, researchers started to uh, go to real field work, um, travel uh, quite far away from their home, and learn uh, languages, and did the field work based on uh, their own everyday observations and uh, interviews and and also interactions with the local people. So um, field work is one of the most fundamental uh, methodologies of uh, social anthropology, and it's not only about how to do field work and how to collect data, but more importantly, it provides a critical view of seeing. Um, so. For example, field work provides um, first-hand empirical data based on daily interactions, based on daily observations, um, ritual uh, events, every uh, every um, aspects of um, our research, uh, research participants' life, and um, we when and also we're going to talk about the emic and amic view, which which means the outsiders and insiders view. So. The outsiders means the researchers, anthropologists, and every one of you. And ethic view means our participants, insiders, uh, insights. So we are going to really understand uh, why people think and perceive things in a certain way that we don't understand, or we have very different understandings. So we have to dig in their uh, social life, in their parts of the culture, to understand that part. And image view means, as a researcher, we have our own training, we have our own background, we have our own education history, our own discipline uh, teaching, and our own gender. So we, we, we did see the same phenomenon from a very different perspective and get a very different uh, results. And how to balance those different views and how to write down the story and how to present the story is really what uh, field work is doing. 
So it's not only about collecting data, but also how to how are we going to collect who we are and how to write and how to represent our stories and data. And so, uh, subjective view and insider's view are valid and important. And for researchers, we have to be really noticed about who we are and what to observe. What questions are we going to ask, and why we ask certain questions? Um, so that means we have to be really aware about our own uh, our own training, our own eyes, and who we are. So we really have to reflect on that part. Um, then in the end, we are going to talk about what is objective research. So if you read Malinowski, you're going to see he's very scientific. He's talking about what is objective, how to make clean data. But if you read another piece of reading, which is on multi-sided ethnography, then you see a very different view. So um, the later anthropologist argues, in fact, that there is no clean data. Everyone, everyone is involved in the field work. So there's no a pure objective research, but an intervolved, a relation-based, a subjective-based research. So um, we really have to think about in our own field work that uh, a critical reflection on uh, who we are, how we're going to do the research, how we present the data. So uh, just a little bit about my own research experiences. So I did um, field work um, since my postgraduate study. Um, mostly I um, did the field work related with China's ethnic minorities. And in my PhD uh, study, I followed one of China's uh, Turkic speaking ethnic minorities who are the Uyghur between Xinjiang and Australia. So I, um, um, I tried to understand their uh, food business between the different, different continents and why they migrated and how they preserved their identity. But most recently, I did my research on Mongolian medicine um, in, in the Mongolia of China. So when people talk about uh, Mongolian medicine and other traditional medicine or indigenous medicine, uh, most often you talk about um, spiritual healing, uh, shamanism, rituals, and things like that. But my way of reflecting on this research is we have too much focus on spiritual side. But in reality, um, the, those traditional medicine is practiced on everyday basis in public hospitals, just as biomedicine. So what are the relationships between, for example, Mongolian medicine and biomedicine? Are they in conflict? Are they cooperate? And how the Mongolian medicine in in, in China's uh, public uh, hospitals and the public healthcare system operate themselves, uh, modify themselves, and uh, transform themselves to be a new type of medicine, and uh, which is actually a process of making themselves instead of being a static traditional medical knowledge. So this is basically I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to share with you. Okay. okay. So I'll hand it back to Professor Chen. Thank you very much for uh, Dr. Ding Mei's uh, exciting introduction of her the field work and her experiences. And we will also interact with all the participants about the process, methodology, techniques of doing a field work in a different culture. And we would like to discuss with you in... Um, several topics, major topics we're going to present together with you. And also we would like to have a brainstorming in the whole process. And uh, we will also upload these PowerPoints and the materials on the course platform. And um, uh, hopefully you will have some time to read all the references that uh, uh, Dr. May and I provided uh, for this workshop. So. We are I'm looking, forward. looking forward to meet you on June you the first. Yeah. Okay. See you. See you.